After more than 40 hours on the train, I made it to Lhasa, the holy capital of Tibet, the hottest region on Earth. It used to be one of the most secluded and isolated places on Earth, but now it's open to the world, and I'm ready to explore it and see what this mystic place is all about. Tibet, the roof of the world, a place that makes our imagination expand with wonder. A mystic land of a striking landscapes and deep spiritual devotion, the home of Tibetan Buddhism, but also a place that has been center of controversy and political revolt. My adventure in the land of the snow begins in Lhasa, the holy capital of Tibet. To get there, I took an incredible 48-hour ride on the world-famous Sky Train, the highest elevator railway in the world that connects Beijing with the once upon a time unreachable Lhasa. The holy capital is no longer the small and peaceful traditional Tibetan town that surrounded the Potala Palace. Lhasa today is a modern city that at first glance looks more Chinese than Tibetan. Internet and mobile services are widely available. International brands have arrived. It even has a department store. The Chinese influence is everywhere. The government in exile, led by the Dalai Lama in India, says that the Chinese government has systematically destroyed the Tibetan culture and is responsible for the death of thousands of Tibetans. Important monasteries, such as the famous Tribun, now appear monk free after being the home of over 10,000 months prior to the occupation. Chinese characters painted during the takeover in 1951 still cover some of its walls. Beijing takes responsibility for the abuses committed during the Cultural Revolution, but points out that there have been major improvements in healthcare, education and infrastructure in Tibet under its control. Despite development and improvement of basic services, Tibetans are vocal with foreigners about a common dream, a free Tibet, the one the Dalai Lama back in their homeland. The uprising in 2008, just before the Olympics, has triggered the repression of Tibetans until today. In every corner, Chinese security forces closely watch the Tibetan population at all times. Despite the tension on the street, there is something magical about Lhasa, something that seems undisturbed by politics or affected by modernity. It is the deep and undeniable spirituality of the Tibetans. Buddhism permeates every aspect of their lives, thumbing prayer beads, holding prayer wheels of all sizes and muttering mantras. Hundreds of pilgrims from all corners of Tibet come daily to Lhasa, some of them walking and others crawling from distant towns of the Tibet Autonomous Region. I joined the crowd following the devotees in the most important pilgrim circuit of the city. The final destination, Jokhang the spiritual heart and the most sacred temple of Tibet. It was built by King Song San Gampo, the first Tibetan emperor who unified Tibet and brought Buddhism to the region. The entrance of this holy site faces the Bakhor Square, the center of the Tibetan quarter, a combination of an outdoor sanctuary for prayers and a shopping hall where you can find anything from prayers and jewelry to antiques and clothing. Although the most important, it is not the only pilgrimage destination in Lhasa. Sorry from the hill into the sky, the Potala Palace is the most important landmark of Lhasa. It was the residence of the Dalai Lamas until the 14th Dalai Lama fled to India after the arrival of the Chinese. Tibetan pilgrims prostrate with devotion outside the huge building converted into a museum. But inside, Chinese tourists and foreigners outnumber Tibetans. Showing up who is in control of Tibet, a Chinese flag billows in the air at the top of the Potala Palace. But the Tibetan soul has not been crushed. Outside their homes, they pledge loyalty to the Chinese rule. But inside their hearts and minds, they dream and have the hope for Tibetan independence. Resilience to protect their culture and tradition. 
Despite repression and hardships, Tibetans are welcoming, <laughs> always with a smile on their enigmatic faces. Lhasa might no longer be in the surface as Tibetan as it used to be prior the Chinese takeover, but when exploring the heart of the holy capital, there is no doubt that its essence is and will always be pure Tibetan. Thank mm -hmm. you.